people don't realize how key education is to our freedom. It's not the school boards I fight, it's the unions I fight. They yeah. call themselves teachers. They're neither one, they're an education mafia. If Christians start to understand, or people of any faith start to understand that our morals are being purposely undermined uh, in order to undermine our free republic and our liberties, I would think they would start to get engaged. All right, here with Rebecca Friedrichs, obviously at the Pastor's Summit here in Coronado, California. Education, you can talk about it till we're blue in the face, but obviously it's a fight that we need to be in and something you've been in for a long time as a teacher. And then now you're fighting the school board, but a lot of people of faith, they're trying to decide, you know, how am I gonna be a warrior for kids and, and my family? And how do I get civically engaged and still honor God throughout that process? How do you answer those questions and that confusion that people might have? Well, I think people need to go back to the beginning and understand the importance of schools. Mm -hmm. So our American founders who were Christians told us the only way to keep a free republic is with a well-educated and moral citizenry that can self-govern. Mm -hmm. So our schools were key to them. Our schools had to have, have to be had to be moral. We had prayer. We had the Ten Commandments on every wall. We used the scriptures um, and our kids had to be really well educated. So we had this incredible educational system, including the Greek and the Latin, classical reading, uh, Bible, uh, and so astronomy, real science. Yeah. So um, people don't realize how key education is to our freedom. What happened is, it's not the school boards I fight, it's the unions I fight. They yeah. call themselves teachers, they call themselves unions, they're neither one, they're an education mafia. And they, and they call themselves educators, but they actually are educators, but for things that aren't a strong foundation. Exactly. Well, their their whole goal is to upend the American Free Republic mm -hmm. and replace it with communism. They yeah. might call it socialism, same thing. And so from the time they were founded in 1857, the National Education Association, their whole goal has been to bring in secular humanism and remove yeah. Christianity to remove morals, to bring in the sexualization and all of this that we're seeing today. So if Christians start to understand, or people of any faith start to understand that our morals are being purposely undermined uh, in order to undermine our free republic and our liberties, I would think they would start to get engaged because I don't think any of them want to live in a communist country. How did people of faith just get so caught off guard? Because you've been involved in this for so long and you talk about things that happened in the 1800s because this stuff doesn't just happen overnight. It's not just all of a sudden you have just a crazy union or you have a crazy school board and then it's just like, well, I think we should start implementing some more of this gender theory stuff. It's like, no, it's been going on for a long time. Yeah. How did, <laughs> like, it's gotta be like, wake up. You right. should have been woken up a long, long time ago. Oh my goodness. I've been trying, personally, been trying to wake people up for 35 years. Yeah. And um, I just discovered what was going on because I had a great master teacher who mm -hmm. saw what was going on and she taught me. But there's others who've come before me who've written books. This one I'm reading, NEA, a Trojan Horse in American Education, mm -hmm. was written years ago. The yeah. author just died recently. So people have been blowing the whistle a long time. And to be honest with you, most people didn't want to listen. They want to stick their heads in the sand mm -hmm. and say, oh, it's not happening at my school. Yeah. So how did the unions do this? How did they lull us to sleep? How did we become the frog in the pot of boiling water, right? Mm -hmm. How did we get boiled? Yeah. Well, it happened because uh, they're very deceptive. Uh, they didn't just in 1857 come in with the critical race theory and the radical sex ed and the transgenderism. Everybody would have said, no, chase, tar and no. feather them, you know, uh, chase them out of town. No, instead they kept some of the good curricula. They kept, they had these little booklets they wrote mm. that were loaded with prayer and Bible verses and yep. stories of heroism. They kept those things. So people weren't aware of what was going on. And then they deceived the teachers. You know, they say, oh, or actually more, they deceived the American people into yep. thinking that they were teachers and that they were defending teachers. Teachers and those are the people that are funding. Exactly. And yeah. what happened to teachers early on, like say in the 50s and 60s, 1950s and 60s, the unions came in and said, y'all have to join. Most teachers didn't want to join. They mm -hmm. got bullied into it. Yeah. And so it's this mafia mentality. So the teachers got bullied into it. And then this, you know, people with a mafia mentality are liars. Yeah. So they lied to the American people and said, we're for the teachers when they were not. And so everybody just 
was sort of lulled to sleep. And I think at the same time, the Americans bought the propaganda that, oh, oh, you're paying all these taxes, so go send your child mm -hmm. to this public school. Early in America, we didn't send our children to public schools. Most children were educated at home or uh, private school or one-room schoolhouse. Uh, it was the unions and their friends who pushed for taxation, you know, bringing the government into the schools and forcing public schools on everyone. So nowadays, most of us don't know that history. We don't realize this was forced on us. And so people just think this is the way it is. They, yeah. they have forgotten that it's their responsibility to raise and educate their children. It seems like especially people of faith have been so apathetic and they haven't understood how to play the long game that especially when I remember just being younger and like school, uh, like God got taken out of school, it's prayer. Yeah. Talk about something as little as that and they're just like, whoa, okay, we'll, we'll give you that. Well, we'll, we'll live and let live. Mm. Uh, and for some reason they were just okay with like, oh, you know, maybe uh, just like, oh, we don't want to push our faith on, on anybody. And then it turned into this like, perfect. We've really made sure that we can take advantage of that apathy. And then now it's playing defense. How do you encourage people of faith to play offense? Because this is another very, very long battle and it's not just going to get fixed in the next year, two years, five years. It's probably going to take generations. It is. And the motivating factor is, look, you have a choice. You can stay in a free country or you can be a communist country and have no freedom at all. Mm. What do you want? I know what I want. Yeah. I want freedom and I want my... I, you can either have uh, you know, the responsibility of raising your children or your children can be taken from you by the government yeah. and sexualized or used as slaves or whatever. It's obvious yeah. what we all want. We want the freedom. Therefore, we have to fight. We have no choice. Mm -hmm. We can't go back and, and whine and say, you know, like my sons are 26 and 30. They didn't cause this. No. Generation before them caused it, but they're stuck with the results. So they have to fight because if we don't fight, we cave. And you know, and the options that we get if we don't fight, I, I, they're just unfathomable. Never. We could we could never go there. So we have to fight. And um, how people fell asleep, I, I think we were too nice. There's this modern Christianity that thinks, oh, it's all about grace. It's all about being nice. No, no, no. Jesus was the one that overturned the tables. He was yeah. the one that says you're dead men's bones, you know, your whitewashed tombs, you're hypocrites, right? He wasn't afraid to call out sin. He was not. Yeah. And we can't be afraid either. And we also can't be afraid of the names they're going to call us. Oh, yeah. You know, I can't tell you the list of names they've called me. I don't read their press. Yeah. I don't focus on that. I focus on what's the goal. Mm -hmm. We need to protect the children. We need to get our morals back into our educational system we need to um you know restore our republic uh keep a free a fair vote i yeah. mean just all of this every problem we're facing in this nation is being mm -hmm. caused by these government unions yeah. so-called teacher unions and other unions they yeah. literally are the root of mm -hmm. every single pro problem in our the branches of our trees so um it's just being aware of that being aware we've been taken we've been lied to we've been deceived we've been lazy mm -hmm. Uh, and we've been too nice, yeah. so it's time to fight. So you're in the same room as a bunch of great pastors from across the country, and then maybe even some international pastors that I know I've met here. What do you want them to get out of what you're saying? Like, what should we be expecting out of our pastors, out of the shepherds of these flocks across the country and across the world? Well, one of the things I shared with the pastors is that our enemy, the people on the other side, the people who don't want freedom, don't want morality, the people who want to push secular humanism, which is a religion, yep. into our schools, mm -hmm. um, they have to have barbecues, throw parties. They have to do all these things to get people to come yep. to them, to be interested in them. Pastors, you open your church door, people come to you yep. because they want to learn the, the gospel. Yep. They want forgiveness from the Lord. They want the truth. So they want the truth. So the first thing I'd say to pastors is give them the truth. Yep. Be relevant for today. What's relevant? Look, their kids are being sexualized. I don't care what country you're coming from. This is going on. Yep. This is worldwide. And definitely um, not just an American thing. No not way. At all. It's not. And so parents need you worldwide. The children need you worldwide. Mm -hmm. So our pastors, the first thing I would say is get relevant. There's so many pastors. That, oh, we don't want to talk about cultural issues. Why not? That's your job. 
we're living in the culture. Imagine what you're going to have to talk about in 20 years if you don't talk about it now. Exactly. Yeah. It's so, so astute. Yeah. It's going to be even more uncomfortable <laughs> if that's possible. Uh, but the next thing I would say to pastors is, look, you have teachers and other government employees in your congregation who are being bullied and terrorized and isolated and used as pawns by these wicked unions who really are um, they're atheists and they're communists mm -hmm. and they're using your congregation to fund the demise of your children, your community's children, the demise of your country, mm -hmm. the demise of your freedoms. Uh, and you have the power to reach them. A lot of us can't reach the, I try to reach teachers every yeah. day and I can get to so many, but all these pastors can get to all of these government employees, yeah. help them to understand myself, little tiny, five foot four teacher and nine other California teachers, we sued these evil unions mm -hmm. and we won all the way up at the US Supreme Court. Yeah. Nobody has to pay a government union anymore. But do you know most people don't know they don't have to pay so they're still shelling out the money yeah. or they're too terrified to stop paying them because yeah. it's hush money, you know, because they don't want the mafia to come mm -hmm. after them. Pastors, we need you and your community to stand around these teachers and government employees and help them to have you to be empowered to stop right. funding these unions. We help them. We walk them through the whole process. It's easy. We just need people standing with them so they'll have the courage to do it. Well, you got me fired up. I hope you're firing up some of these pastors to I start standing so up a little bit. And we already have so many great pastors that are doing some incredible things yeah. and making sure that they're hearing what you're saying. They're instilling that in their congregation. And hopefully that just spreads throughout their community. So thank I pray. you. I pray. Absolutely. And they can call on me anytime. I'll come thank to you. any church and talk. Thank you.